Hey guys, Ivan here. So I found a very interesting piece of information. This is something that a lot of people speculate about, but this is the first time I believe that one of these guys spoke openly about politics in bodybuilding. What you're gonna hear in a second is Muscle and Strength, The Menace podcast by Dennis James, in which Kevin Leveroni speaks about what Joe Weider back in the day told him as to why he, Kevin Leveroni, cannot win the Mr. Olympia, why not Sean Ray, Nasser somebody, Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier, whoever, why always it has to be Dorian Yates. And the answer will surprise you. Let's take a listen. This is the first time I'm hearing something like this straight from the horse's mouth. Did you learn something from Joe? Of course. Uh, I've learned not to take it personal, uh, your placings, because I remember asking Joe, well, why is it that, you know, none of us can never win the Mr. Olympia and you always keep giving it to the same guy? <laughs> His answer to me at the time, you know, was, you know, um, if I take the, my top four guys you know, that, that finished second, third, fourth, and I shuffle you around, or if I put you in first and put Sean, whatever it is, then I'm still going to make the same amount of money. Nothing's going to change. But if I <laughs> keep, was like but if I keep uh, Dorian where, where he's at, he opens up a whole complete different market. That was the first thing. So, Oh, he like, said you know that what? to you? Yeah, he, he was right, and he was right, too. Um if I had a one flex or whatever, Sean or whatever, and or Chris or whoever, it still would have been the co corporation wouldn't have made any more money. Hmm. But Dorian Yates opened up another whole avenue. So I, at that point, I said, you know what? It's business. And um, I really didn't take it personal because he says, hey, you know, just just look at it as, as, as a business. And that's when I decided, you know what? If I'm not going to win the Miss Olympia, I'm going to try to win everything else I can to uh, market myself the best way I can. And at that point, I didn't take it personal. And then he yeah. said, it's not that you're not good enough to, to be Mr. Olympia. You certainly are good enough. Wow. Wow. What did we just hear? I mean, we kind of all speculated about this. It was kind of expected. But still, I mean, hearing it from somebody who was actually there, somebody who was very close to winning that Mr. Olympia, but never really got to that point actually admitting that Joe Weider, the father of bodybuilding, who was running things back in the day, actually told him precisely he is good enough to win the Mr. Olympia. Sean Ray might be good enough, Flex Wheeler too, Nasser El Sambari, but Dorian Yates staying the champion simply makes more financial sense. He is better on that position money-wise. It is better for the corporation. It is better for business of bodybuilding, of Mr. Olympia. Yes, it kind of made sense, but hearing it from somebody with so much integrity and credibility, like Kevin Leveroni, testifying basically that there was politics in bodybuilding is kind of mind-boggling, really. If you're gonna exactly speak about Dorian Yates himself, you guys know that I am a big fan of Dorian, that is my favorite physique of all time, and personally, I think he deserved every single one Mr. Olympia, but now after hearing this, I'm not even so sure. I always felt like it was one of those cases of apples and oranges, because Dorian, he was, you know, the pale white guy who had really gnarly conditioning, who was always grainy and dry, but he didn't have the bubbleness, the 3D effect, the roundness of the other black guys in the top, like Sean Ray, like Flex Wheeler, Kevin Leveroni too, and Nasser, even though he was half Egyptian, he was still very round, he didn't have that flatter but dry look like Dorian, so I understand, it is apples and oranges, some people would like one kind of physique more than the other, and I heard so many times by the people who were watching the Mr. Olympia live that Dorian Yates was the most shredded human being they ever saw in person and that you cannot see that on photos, that in person, on that stage, he was much drier, harder, more conditioned than anybody on that stage. And so even in 97 against Nasser El Sambari, Dorian pretty much had one arm left. His midsection was blown out, it was his worst shape of his life, and uh, Nasser was looking amazing, still Dorian won, and I felt like it was probably because Dorian was really dry, and I heard that this was his best conditioning ever, still he had so many flaws, though he did win. 
But look guys, we all pretty much already knew that politics somehow exist at a certain level at the Mr. Olympia. We even saw this last year at the Mr. Olympia, Big Remy won, but was Big Remy really the best bodybuilder on that stage or was he simply the biggest bodybuilder on that stage and the biggest name in bodybuilding? In that top three, I mean. It looks, it looks to me and to many other people that they went for the most marketable guy in that top three and that was Big Remy. No, he wasn't necessarily the best physique here. He is the biggest. His brand is huge. Pretty much anybody who got into bodybuilding heard about the name Big Remy. And the Mr. Olympia needs to be somebody who can represent the bodybuilding, the entire bodybuilding. So there are politics in bodybuilding. We all kind of knew that. But still, it is sort of shocking to hear somebody pretty much testify that somebody at the very top of bodybuilding at the Mr. Olympia told him exactly this is why you cannot win. This is why he has to win. It's not that you don't deserve it, but he has to win because of the business of bodybuilding, business of the Mr. Olympia. Guys, please be my guest. Tell me in the comment section down below what is your opinion on this whole thing. Tell me what do you think about Dorian Yates. Did he really deserve to win all those victories? And are there still politics today in modern bodybuilding? And if you guys want to support me and my channel, you can try Vintage Brawn. It is a protein powder. It's actually a combination of whey protein isolate, beef isolate and egg white protein. And it is tasting so amazing. There is a bunch of flavors. You can choose your own. There is a link in the description of this video that will get you there. And for a 12% discount, just use the code EVEN. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye bye.